Wales, Hugh Jackman, Project Runway fashionista, Tim Gunn, and comedian, Paul F. Tompkins. From Hollywood, here's Rove McManus. Thank you very much. Welcome to the show, everyone. There is a man in the house with the best porno moustache I have ever seen. Huh? I don't know what you said, but it just looked creepy from where you were. Have you come to clean the pool? Seriously, it's really dirty. It needs, it needs a clean. Um, I am very glad you are here. Very glad you're here. Very glad you're all here. In fact, I'm very glad we are here because uh, yesterday, true story, a group of us we were just driving along when all of a sudden we were run off the road by a lady who was on her phone with the dog in her lap. <laughs> and, uh, did we get an apology? No, she just, what she did was she just did the wave thing. Like, just, oh, my bad. <laughs> she may well have, have, have just said, oh, welcome to LA. <laughs> and this, this actually happened. I would not lie in front of you gentlemen. This actually happened and uh, I kind of, I don't know how it is for you guys when you're here, but people are like that here. They drive like that. It's crazy. Right, for starters, no one uses their blinkers. No one indicates. <laughs> well, they do in a way, like if they're veering across three lanes of traffic <laughs> with a dog on their lap while they're on the phone, it's an indication that they're from LA. And what was the story with the dog? Like, there's no reason for a dog to be on your lap while you're driving. Unless you're blind and it's a seeing eye dog, in which case, of course. <laughs> and who's she on the phone to, you know? Hello, 911, I think I'm about to have an accident. <laughs> Thankfully, an accident was averted by the driver in our car who, who yelled, no! <laughs> that's right. That'll do it. No. <laughs> it was, you're right, Hugh, you were right. That's it, that's all it took. That's all you it's, need. It was just that easy. Yeah. Which made me think maybe the dog was driving. <laughs> <laughs> no, stay, stay. Check your mirrors, check them. <laughs> but to think that this woman is driving around, yet when I got my license here, or I had to go get my license when I arrived in LA, I failed. <laughs> now, granted, I did run a stop sign and I nearly had an accident with a semi-trailer. But other than that, it was flawless. <laughs> And naturally, the instructor was not very pleased, right, when we got back. And uh, he was very upset, uh, not only because I nearly killed him, but it was so scary, his dog shat all over his lap. <laughs> <laughs> Went back the next week, it was all fine. <laughs> These guys look famous, let's chat to them. Oh, His new movie is wife. called Real Steel, Hugh Jackman. <laughs> From Project Runway, Star Guru, Tim Gunn. Now, you only recently got your driver's license. That is true. I did not have the excuse of being from the other side of the world. <laughs> I was just afraid. <laughs> do, you, do you drive around New York, Hugh? I do drive around New York. You yeah. do? Is it now, easy? that is crazy. Yeah. Yeah, but it's kind you drive of... yourself? Yeah, I do. I'm, well, not right. myself, so I've got a driver. Oh, that's what I mean, though. I'm not behind the wheel. No, I'm kidding. Yes, I drive I really behind the wheel, yeah. Oh, right. You would be a great GPS voice, though. You think? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Would no, be. I would be belligerent. In New York, you've got to be belligerent. I find, actually, my wife, my son, Oscar, when he was three, was saying the word asshole because Deb, <laughs> just like, you know, is quite a, you know, Deb, quite a pleasant person. Asshole, get out of the way! <laughs> it's something about driving New York, unless you swear. There's a lot of assholes out there. And That's there true. are a lot of assholes. Yeah. There are. Yeah. It's, one of, the, it's one of the two it's phrases like... I've learned since moving to America is asshole <laughs> and, and have a nice day. <laughs> so often I'm just walking around going, have a nice day, asshole. Exactly. Good to be used together. Yeah. yeah. Now, Tim, you don't drive at all, oh, do you? Oh, no. I mean, I know how to drive, but I'm smart enough to not be, get behind the wheel of a car, and I've lived in New York for 28 years. I plan to live there 
forever, and I do not own a car. But it's okay in New York because you can walk oh, around. But you, you shot a series uh, of Project Runway in LA. We did. So what did you do then? You cannot, it's, it is illegal to walk in this city. Well, I found that out. Yeah. I, found, I, really did. Yeah. I found that out. I, I insisted that I have a place within walking distance of the set where we were taping <laughs> and of uh, walking distance of amenities. Um, grocery store, liquor store, dry cleaner. <laughs> That's it. So you um, yeah. I, I lived downtown and was successful in that. But I was the only person, the only person on the street walking. And Hang on, I, whoa, whoa. You're walking downtown? Now, isn't downtown, like, very dangerous? Uh, well, there? compared to New York, I don't know. Oh, it's it looks, fine. looks like a pick. A well-dressed man, he could get, you could get yourself in trouble. It's, actually, it's because there's nobody else down there. there. Right. Or you could not be safer. It's like Will Smith LA. in that movie where he was just the only man left on <laughs> yes, Earth right, with the dog. Yeah, that's right, That's exactly yeah, yeah. it. Except incredibly well-dressed. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. All right, well, there's now time for a part of the show we call Getting to Know You. <laughs> Rob um, actually does this at his house. <laughs> with the music. I rock a Cassio like it's no one's business. <laughs> getting a little funky this week, getting to know you. This is the part of the show where we learn something exciting and new about each of our guests in the hope that it may lead to a scintillating televisual discourse. <laughs> <laughs> Hugh, of course, we know as the star of X-Men and your new film, Real Steel, but what right. people don't know is that you used to be a clown at kids' parties. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Not a lot of people know about it because I choose not to talk about it. <laughs> Pretty cheap, 50 bucks an hour is all I charged and I was Coco, I believe. Coco. I rented a clown outfit, which I never gave back. <laughs> and I really had no magic tricks, so I confined myself to kids' parties around about the age of four where you just, hey, hey, you know, you could juggle a little bit. And I remember once going to a party where there were eight-year-olds and I walk in and I didn't realise it was eight-year-olds and I was freaking out and I was trying to entertain them and I was not, and I remember to this day, this kid gets me and goes, Mom, this clown is crap. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know if it's the same here. In Australia, you hire a clown so you can go and drink for an hour with your friends. <laughs> it's like, great, clown's here. You got him for an hour, right? <laughs> so the parents are kind of like, what, what, Billy? And I'm like, hey, Billy. And so I pull out, that I'd never used before, the, the 12, the dozen eggs, right? And I'm uh -oh. juggling the eggs and they're like, yeah, and then I just smashed my head and I went, yeah, cool. <laughs> so I'm smashing two or three. And then I said, hey, Bill, you want to throw an egg at me? He goes, yeah, this is awesome. <laughs> we love this clown, Mum. <laughs> and then I let him jump on me and that was the last clowning gig I ever did. <laughs> It's, well, it's hard to top. That's a, that's a tough act to follow. Apart from half the films I've done. Yeah. <laughs> ah. <laughs> All right, well, Tim, uh, you're best known for critiquing designs on Project One, Runway, of course, but what people wouldn't know about you is that your father was an FBI agent. He was, for 20 Where are the aliens? <laughs> <laughs> Where are they hiding them? Actually, my father would never have told us, and they may have been in our basement, as far as I know. <laughs> uh, he was, was very closed-lipped about it all. Did he, did he bring anything home? Like, was there interesting well, documents actually, lying around the house? he did. Uh, for <laughs> those of you who remember the Kennedy era, um, he brought home the Warren Commission, which, before it was released, um, which described all of the background details of the Kennedy assassina assassination. And my mother learned of this because she has big ears, <laughs> and she took it into the bathroom, got into the bathtub with it, and my father said, you've got to come out of there. I mean, this is a top secret document. You can't have it. I could get fired knowing if people know that you have this. And I watched my father take down the door with an ax. <laughs> well, your mother oh, is whoa, in the... Whoa. What up? Did she light <laughs> candles and stuff? I, like, I, I don't know. Oh, I've been waiting to read this Warren commission. <laughs> it's, not, it's not a Danielle Steele. No, exactly. But she was riveted. For only about 20 minutes. Yeah. Wow. And oh, chopped the door down. Yeah. And it was The Shining all of a sudden. Exactly. Ah. Exactly. That's hard to top. All right, Paul. <laughs> Paul F. Tompkins, Incredible. internationally renowned comedian, also uh, has appeared in movies from ranging from There Will Be Blood to <laughs> Disney's Tangled. That's true. Uh, but, uh, Same character in both. <laughs> yeah. uh, plus Unofficial you were, sequel. You, you were also once freaked out at a Doctor Who convention. What happened? When I was a kid, I was a big Doctor Who fan, and I went to a convention because I thought, well, this will be fun, and I was wrong. It wasn't <laughs> fun at all. 
everybody was, I, I learned very quickly, like, oh, I don't want to just, I don't want to talk about this really intensely with strangers <laughs> for hours and hours and hours. I kind of just want to watch the show and be done with it. <laughs> and seeing the people uh, walking around in the costumes and everything, it really traumatized me forever. <laughs> Have you ever been back since? Never, never. And there's, there's an event called Comic-Con in San it's Diego. It's a very big deal. You would know all about that. Yes. Yeah. And it's just gotten bigger and bigger and oh, bigger yeah. every yeah, year. Order a million people. I, I, have, I have never felt more agoraphobic about a thing that I have never been to in my <laughs> life. Just the when people start talking about it, I start to sweat, break out in hives. Just the idea of it. Science fiction people, I think, should go back to hiding their light under a bushel. I think just, just, just be more ashamed of it. <laughs> Hide in your little time machine. Yes, it's exactly. best for everybody. Yeah. Well, That's there is what an, online is for. That's true. Yes. That really is. Yeah. All right, well, we've got to take a break. We'll be right back. You like that? You like that? We've got the uh, catwalk down good. Hugh Jackman, Tim Gunn, and Paul F. Tompkins. Uh, now, Paul, I know you were very nervous. I think we all were, but you in particular about what to wear tonight, knowing Tim Gunn was on. Oh, yes. I, I am a bit of a, uh, a clothes horse, and uh, you, I am used to being the nicest dressed person in the room. And then I knew coming here, seated next to Mr. Gunn, that I would look like a railroad hobo. <laughs> Oh, please. So I did the best I could. I've always been an admirer of your wardrobe. You have great suits. You're extremely sartorially c correct. And yes. I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm not a sure. Fan. I think Stand up for us, Paul. Stand up. Oh, look. yeah. Oh, look at this. Sure. Three piece suit. Can we see the stuff? Look at this. Oh, I'm sorry. my microphone pack. I'm meaning a special jacket made. <laughs> and these so are, these are socks, socks, socks from my wife, yes, that have. Uh, Never yeah, I, has a man with a cephalopod on his ankle <laughs> had a crowd go, woo, octopus, am I right? That's right. A Not since President Lincoln. <laughs> that is true. That was, that was just for us. That was nice, though. <laughs> I liked that. Now, uh, Hugh, I'm afraid, tsh, I just opened don't, this can of worms. Don't do it. Don't we have mentioned it. this before. Don't. You we have not I. in America. No. <laughs> we have not mentioned oh, this before. Where are we but, going? Hugh and I got our first... <laughs> oh, no, you're, not your first break on television, but my first break on television... Yes. ...was, uh, was on a show called In Fashion. Yes. Which, which you hosted. Yes. I so, Tim, I, I hate to bring this up, but we had two men who knew nothing about fashion on yep. a fashion program. <laughs> to be fair, Tim, I was playing the role of the layman, of okay. the average Joe, saying, whoa, Melissa, what is a hemline? You know, and over to, over to Melissa. Those are She's in the audience tonight. Melissa, Melissa Hoyer? Hoyer? She's in the audience tonight. Hello. You are kidding me. That's a... Melissa, oh what is God. a headline? We're going to get... What is a headline? I've been holding people for years. Hello, darling. Hello. How are you? How are you? Oh, wow. Wow. Well, look, so... Uh, Welcome back to In Fashion. This is our live audience version of the show. <laughs> you know what? We have come a long way, yeah. haven't we? Is it possible, mm -hmm. outside of Halloween, to wear orange and black? We are saying... <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, now, I am the misleader. We, <laughs> we have talked about this on the show uh, before. Uh, <laughs> and the best part is we've never had any footage. Oh, sh but now... Oh, no. But now we're on the network that that show was That on. apparently burned it for me <laughs> yeah. as a gift. But so uh, we have some footage here of you, <laughs> Melissa, and dare I say it, me. Oh, my God. From, like, 1997. Oh! I know! Oh. I'm only joking, we don't really. Good. No, we do. Here Hello. it is. <laughs> Well, I have made a beautiful bouquet for my Valentine. Oh, that's lovely. lovely. But what happens on Valentine's Day if you actually don't have a date? Well, mm. we send out our reporter, Rove, to get a few expert tips on how to find romance on the most romantic day of the year. If... <laughs> Valentine's Day. I'm single, all alone, and I've got nothing to do. I know! I'll have a twister party. <laughs> That's hilarious. I... It is hilarious. By the way, 
Look, I've never told you this, but it was actually that show that got me Wolverine. There. <laughs> It was the it was producer the fact that you saw it and went, That guy, he's that tough. guy, that guy's surrounded by giant flowers. Why? <laughs> well, yeah, but so that, far I was away. Say, what <laughs> Thank that? God. Like we're spying on these people yes. having this conversation. That was in my contract, no close ups. <laughs> and I have to be behind many bushes. <laughs> Tim, what as someone impression. who works on a fashion program, what, what would be your review of our work? <laughs> um. <laughs> Remember, we are here in the room. I, I would call it use amateur arresting. Hour, <laughs> <laughs> now, Arre Tim, I was transfixed. <laughs> now, uh, Tim, you you are known for your fashion, but you too have badly dressed skeletons rattling around oh, in your closet, correct? Many, 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 many. May I may I show a photo of you from 1975? Uh, I'm game. Let's have a look at Tim when <laughs> fresh. You look like you're. Uh, Look at this. Were you in Napoleon Dynamite? I, I'm the original Napoleon Dynamite. I am. So, so, <laughs> the, where... <laughs> it's like you knew how you were going to react to that photo in the future. <laughs> that was the expression on your face, like, no, was, I am going to regret seeing it was this. Grim. <laughs> it was from the 70s. It was a grim decade, I have to say, fashion-wise. It so, really was. So it was being, challenging. So, as we mentioned before, you were from, you were from a, a, a family with uh, an axe-wielding FBI agent in the house. <laughs> how, how was it for you to, to, to say, I want to be in fashion? I, fashion came after me, to be really honest. I mean, I, I was at Parsons, I was teaching, I was an administrator, and as an administrator, I was associate dean, and I would say about myself that I'm a Mr. Fix-It, otherwise known as a pooper scooper, and I would go <laughs> into places within the, the college and university that needed fixing. And our fashion program was in a period of crisis, and it ended up becoming a seven and a half year gig for me. And it, it was my catalyst for having to learn about this industry and straighten myself out when it came to fashion. So it's all fairly new to me um, in the last 11 years of my life, really. So I, I had a, a transformation and a kind of epiphany. Oh, right. Well, I guess, Hugh, you had a similar thing when you were growing up because you, you wanted to be a dancer. Like, you're from a sporting yeah. family but wanted to be a dancer. Yeah. And everybody said it was a sissy thing to do. Oh, that old... My, yeah. I, <laughs> yeah. I went to see Billy Elliot and I was like, damn, I wish I'd been Billy Elliot, but I wasn't. <laughs> yeah, right. I, I, I was, I had a teacher who said, oh, Hugh, I was probably 11. He said, you should do dancing lessons. They don't have dancing lessons at school, so go and do them. I was like, great, I love dancing. So I went home, told my dad, he was like, great. And my brother overheard and went, oh, oh, dancing, what a sissy. And I went, what? I think he used the word poof and I kind of didn't know what it was at the time. And I was like, I bet I could tell it was bad. So that was it. I just basically said, oh, don't worry, dad. Don't worry, I'm fine. And, and then forgot about him when I was 18. My dad took my brother and I to see uh, 42nd Street. Oh. And my brother came out to me at interval and he said, I'm really sorry. I said, uh, for what? And he said, Years ago, I said, don't be down. He said, you should be up there doing it. I was such an idiot, and, and you were an idiot for listening to me. So you should go and do it. And so I started right there. But you and have to say, there. things must happen for a reason, because look at you now. So yeah, things happen for a reason. I'm yeah, no, it, that's a lot of pressure well, on, on I, an 11-year-old. I kind of, yeah, I, I, it wasn't such a big deal to me at the time, except I just thought, oh, this is bad. And then I forgot about it. I think that's the thing I'm most upset about. You kind of you get on, you forget. And then when I was 18, I was like, oh, yeah, dancing. I love dancing. So, anyway. Has it ever been an issue for you? When you, like, when you do The Boy From Oz and stuff like that, do you worry if people kind of would ah. sit there thinking, oh, he's a woolly woofter. He's a bit gay, that Hugh Jackman. <laughs> no, I reckon... He's yeah, too perfect. Woofter. He's too perfect. He has to be. You can't, yeah. You seriously can't be in Hollywood without rumour. In fact, if you've not got that rumour, you're not anywhere. I've had it. You're not doing anything. I've had, I get it. I, I think it's fine. Well, for you, it's different because... Because of the Twister Party. <laughs> Now, Tim, you, you describe yourself as being homo, romantic, asexual. Well... What does that mean? I, I'm, I'm a, a, a very romantic guy. I, I cry at love movies and get all caught up in, in romance and relationships. And I'm... Um, how to phrase this? <laughs> I'm, a I'm. I mean, I haven't been with anyone for, um, both for thirty years, and and I'm very proud to say I'm a gay man, um, and I'm really not looking for anyone, and I'm very happy. I couldn't be happier, 
and people can live alone and have a very happy existence. And I have to say, I have a very full life. I mean, I, I interact with people every day and don't feel any sense of, of, of a void. Um, but that's a very accurate phrase. Oh, well, I got it from you. <laughs> <laughs> but you date, you, you date, right? No. You, you don't date and no. never go on a date? No. But, but or would someone ask you on a date? I, I mean, to be quite honest, I don't have time. Right. I really don't. I mean, I have one evening off between now and November 1st. And I'm not complaining. It's a high-class problem. But, <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm, I have a really busy, full I've, life. And I also, I'm the luckiest guy I know. I mean, when I think about this whole phenomenon that's happened to me, I had a wonderful career as an educator. And it was right after I turned 50, six months after I turned 50, that the Project Runway producers called me. And, you know, at 50, you're beginning to think, gee, I, should I be investigating a little cabin in the woods? And instead, <laughs> this entirely new threshold is presented to you, and, and you think, what a phenomenon. Phenomenon. I mean, it's just incredible. Now, Paul, you did do musicals in high school, didn't you? <laughs> yes, I did. We did, um, I played the role of Jigger in Carousel. Yeah. Okay. You've done Car <laughs> Carousel. That's right. Great part. Um, uh, South Pacific, and wow. you know, we did all that. So we did, a, we did a, an extremely illegal version of Mary Poppins. This was before, oh there was no, <laughs> when we, when we, there was no stage version of Mary Poppins when we did oh. this show, oh. but somehow they got in a hold of the screenplay and sort of constructed a stage version of it. And to make it more illegal, um, at one point to cover a costume change, You're all naked. a screen, <laughs> that's right, yeah. It sort of segued into hair. Uh, a, a screen comes down and we just showed a scene from the movie. Oh, that's that's right. Right. Like, there's right. no way that was allowed. I remember the there's audience no going, way. it's a triumph. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now right. it's getting good. Well, speaking of getting good, coming up, Hugh Jackman breaks a man's jaw. a shot from behind me and then try to hide, cameraman. Oh, they might not know that someone got a shot from behind you. There he is. Yay! <laughs> Off he goes. Off he goes. It's all right. From a competing right. show. <laughs> Just stealing audience reactions for his own show. <laughs> uh, now, Hugh, of course, we should talk about uh, Real Steel, your, your latest. We should talk about the movie. We've got to really, do that. Because, yeah. um, now, what, you properly looked like you had trained for this. Like, you did boxing for this? Well, I kind of did, because Sugar Ray Leonard came on board oh. as the advisor. Wow. And, yeah. Now, I should point out, this is, of course, it's a, it's a movie set in the future where Thank real you. boxers have been replaced by robot boxing. Exactly. It's the biggest sport in the world, robot boxing. Oh. And all the robots that you see fighting are done with, uh, like, motion capture guys in the suits. Mm. And Sugar Ray choreographed every one of them. So he gave them all style. And then they said, well... Listen, if you'd like, Sugar Ray could teach you how to box. I'm like, if I'd like, I mean, like, it's like <laughs> the best personal trainer in the world, just the champ. So he trained me and he was unbelievable. You know, you've got to remember he's champion of the world. So yeah. he was like, my name's on this. You're not going to make me look bad. And so <laughs> he trained me pretty hard. And most of the time he's sweet. And every time he boxed, he, he could just know how to hit you, but not hit you. And then... Uh, one point, the behind-the-scenes camera came, you know, and, like, and just as soon as that red light came on, something tweaked, and so he just started hitting me. And I'm like, God. <laughs> I'm like, whoa, whoa, Ray. And I turned, I'm like, oh, yeah, camera, hey, Ray, I'm like this. <laughs> he just kept hitting me in the stomach, Ooh. like, you know, oof. It's just, he couldn't help it with the, you know, just the behind-the-scenes camera. Just once, would you like to do a movie where you don't have to train, where you could just, this role yes. requires you to eat donuts. Yes. <laughs> I have actually had two of those movies and both have been cancelled, but it was a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, your training really paid off because wrestling fans like myself yes, saw you uh, on Fox 8 a couple of nights ago. Yep. You punched a wrestler in the face. Head. This, uh, this happened head. on uh, Raw, uh, WWE Raw. Hugh was a guest and uh, this is what went down. Now look at now what? with our guest star here tonight. Like real iconic. Was it real? Yeah. Now, so look. you know it's fake, right? it's, You're it's, not meant to hit the people. It is scripted entertainment. Sorry, right? yes. And I got to tell you, in the ring, well, you know this, they are going for it. 
Mm. And backstage, they are like, they G each other up, like, hit me, hit me. And, the, you know, there was a possible scenario where I may have to retaliate. And he says, if this happens, you make sure you go for it. Don't you be like some sissy actor. You go for it, man. <laughs> you go for it. And I'm like, all right. And then he said something about it. And if you don't and you miss, they're going to boo you. And I'm like, boo me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hitting you. <laughs> So I did. I smacked him pretty hard, and uh, I got to tell you, that guy's—he's tough. Yeah, he, he yeah. did really well. It was well. great because he could never hit me back. To <laughs> I'm too expensive. Right. <laughs> right. Prior to that, when's the last time you hit somebody? Like hit another human being? Had it I, been a long time? I actually stabbed someone in an X-Men movie. Yeah. Just Which, some on purpose? guy who was just... No, there was a the, uh, Mystique. The girl Ooh. playing Mystique is sort of basically naked, but all blue, mm -hmm. right? And there was a fight sequence where she's reaching for something I don't want her to get, so I go to stab her and she moves her arm away. She forgot to move her arm oh, away, no. and the metal claw went right into her arm and came out. And you know it was deep because it took like three seconds for blood to come, and then... Oh, God. Blah, 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 blah. And I immediately went white and I I'm started sure. freaking out. I mean, it was the first time I'd stabbed someone up. <laughs> and unintentionally. And she, she, it, sort of my <laughs> yeah. And she just goes, Wolverine, stab me! <laughs> yes! As the blood is like pouring out, you know. Well, we should uh, have a look at a clip from Real Steel. Like we mentioned, like the. Keep the, saying should. The, well, otherwise we'll get in terrible trouble. Because I will punch you. you know? <laughs> the man has knives. Uh, and yeah, it's like it's motion capture kind of CGI stuff, and it looks phenomenal, especially up on the big screen. Uh, have a look, this is Real Steel. <laughs> Big Hollywood, big Hollywood movie. It's the, uh, it's the, it's the special effects team from Avatar. I'm, be <laughs> uh, I'm being told that might have been the wrong clip. Oh, no, Let's have a look at proper real steel. Check this out. you! pain revolution! I got something for you. Nine foot tall. Nine feet? And for half the movie, we had real robots. Actual nine foot robots. Good that, goodness. Unless if they were walking or fighting, they're CGI, but otherwise they're real. Good now, uh, Tim, man. people might be interested to know that you were uh, quite a sporty person. Like, you were... Uh, <laughs> I thought a... you were going to say, you were also a robot. <laughs> <laughs> Some people accuse me of being a robot. You are a, robot, a, a nine robotic. foot tall robot. But you were a champion swimmer at school. <laughs> I, 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 was, I was a, a, a swimmer. <laughs> we were all so surprised. Sorry. Um, <laughs> no, I know, everyone is. But I had to participate in the sport, and I really hated team sports, and I was bad at them. I was always the last kid picked for everything. And... With swimming, you get to do it alone, it's solo, unless you're part of a relay, and it's clean, and you don't sweat. So who could ask for anything more? I loved it. Are you still sporty now? Like, you might be a good swimmer, but running's not particularly your forte, is it? Um, walking is a challenge for me, Rose. <laughs> for so someone no, who, who, who gets around uh, on foot, uh, there, we have a clip here from uh, uh, an outtake from Project uh -oh. Runway, when you guys were running around a track and field yes. uh, track, <laughs> and well, uh, and Heidi made you, Heidi made you run. Well, yes, German German dominatrix that she is, <laughs> she had a whip and chain, and she was going after me, metaphorically only. Let's have a look at Tim in action. You should come no. running with me in the mornings. Never. Let me just see what it looks like. <laughs> It's pathetic. <laughs> How do you keep it this skinny figure I, that you I have? I don't. <laughs> I love it as a running star. It's, it's kind of great. It should be, that should be an event. Like, why that isn't an event? It's you, very you leisurely. the real sort of walking, yeah. Olympic yeah, yeah. walking I was actually I trying to, to run. I was trying to run. <laughs> have you done That's it? as good as I it gets. I used to compete as a walker. We should oh, have a really? school, yeah. Ah. Because no one else did it. If you want to excel in a sport, pick walking. Who does it? <laughs> but it was, my elder brother did it. My next brother did it, so I did it. And the really embarrassing thing was, I remember going to a disco and thinking walking would be a good style for dancing. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any music? Can we play some music? We got any music? I'm sure we have. Give me some music. I want to show you what walking looks like on the dance floor. <laughs> really good. You can do your stuff. You know what 
I would be able to do that. You've got that. I'll, can we can we have a race? Uh oh. <laughs> we'll, we'll have a break. Seems so, more like an after we, the break no, kind of yeah. thing. Or done. Or then during we will the break. Build the <laughs> And a, st a stadium. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then and I want nine foot robots as well. Can we do that? <laughs> All right, we'll see for some. Okay, we'll have a break, and then we will have a race. Okay. <laughs> oh my God! Warming up, just warming up for the look. You know, the word historical gets used quite a bit in this industry, <laughs> but this uh, is going to be just that as we present to you the first ever inaugural Tim Gunn <laughs> running race. So, gentlemen, we will head our way back into the studio uh, in the style of Tim Gunn oh, or right. Hugh Jackman dancing. Right, <laughs> take, your, take your choice. Okay, uh, does someone want to say in your mask? I said go. On your marks. Oh, thank you. Who is that? Go! Oh, no. both. You're on an invisible pony, that's what you're doing. <laughs> you're making fun of your own wall! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at that, I'm not even gonna do You jack right now. Ball up, Duncan's coming around the outside. Here they come. Exhausting. I was exhausted. How is that so tiring? That is tiring. It was weirdly tiring. It was. Yeah. Exactly. It was. I think, I think we just invented yes. a new exercise team. Yes. I think, I think Tim watched the Thunderbirds growing up. I did. He got it from. Yeah. yeah. That's, oh, that's it. That's it. Well, that's it. That's and then when they, sit, and when they little... used to sit, it would get all tangled and they'd be like... Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then so one depressed. hand would just stop. <laughs> they look so <laughs> depressed <laughs> when they would sit down. <laughs> <laughs> all right, while we catch our breath, oh. let us play tonight's three leading questions. <laughs> like we're gonna... That sounds oh, boy, like a boy. quick typewriter. This is a jam-packed show. <laughs> As always, uh, <laughs> do not worry. Uh, these do not get too personal. Tim! Do you have a stiffy right now? <laughs> almost seems personal. That also seems personal. Um, it depends upon exactly what you're talking about. Because, because part of me is always stiff. He's a romantic. Stiff. We've already part discussed. of me is always stiff. Mm -hmm. Hugh, have you yes. ever killed a man? <laughs> Paul, have you ever killed a man, then bought his wife a present? <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing that tonight. <laughs> Well, the reason I asked uh, tonight's three leading questions, aside from Tim's, which was just rude, I'm sorry, Tim, I don't know what I was thinking, uh, but they lead us towards tonight's topic of the LA County Coroner's, wait for it, gift shop. That's right, yes, yes, sharp intake of breath. <laughs> the city morgue in Los Angeles has its own gift shop, and all I got was this lousy T-shirt that says, inappropriate, have a look. I'm here in the LA County Coroner's gift shop with Craig R. Harvey. Uh, what does the R stand for? Rigor mortis? Uh, no, no, no. Central Rambler. Are people seriously coming in and identifying Nan's body and then saying, oh, and I need to pick up some tea towels? No, this serves a, a segment of the population that identifies with the history of the Los Angeles County Coroner's Office. Have you ever seen people out and about with uh, items from your store? I see them all the time. I see the t-shirts and when I go to uh, uh, the beach, I'm not surprised to see a beach towel here and there as well. When they first debuted and to this day, continue to be one of the most popular items for sale in the store. Actually, nobody uses chalk outlines anymore. You don't want to contaminate the scene. I've only just moved to Los Angeles. The one thing I was looking forward to was seeing some chalk outlines, and now you're telling me they don't exist anymore? Well, there may be bodies to see, but probably no chalk outline. Well, that's all right. As long as people are still getting killed. What, could, what DVD are you selling here? Is this we actually had footage of people 
TV morning. series. You we had did. a TV series, no. So were you in this? I'm in several episodes here talking about the work that the coroner does. Okay, let's, let's, uh, let's recreate something right now. Let's pretend uh, like I'm the young maverick coroner who doesn't follow everyone else's coroner rules <laughs> and you're the uppity, starchy chief who just won't let me do what I want to do, man. Okay. Listen, Chief, I just want to take bodies and do what I want to do with them. And I'm sick of you and your red tape. We're going to follow procedures and do it the way we trained you to do it. And how long have you top off just to finish off the role? It's all part of Hollywood. And... Do what now? But has anyone ever been caught uh, shoplifting from this store? No, because as you can see around the corner, we have some very specific warnings for shoplifters. Next of kin will be notified. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> Are you the heavy in the store, Edna? Yes, I am. So if the shit goes down, you're the woman in charge. What do you find most people are here for? Our beach towels. It's just the beach towels. What do you recommend to people who come in? The beach towels. <laughs> do you like what you see, ladies? Oh, yeah. Can I recommend a barbecue apron? This sounds great. Oh, there's a, there's a great towel. I mine a lot of stuff. I've been here before. This is the shopping place to come. You've been here before? Absolutely. You come here for your Christmas gifts. Wow. <laughs> you must not like your friends very much. I don't know if this is the first time anyone's ever asked you this, Craig, but can I try on your underwear? Um, yeah, if you'd like. How's that? That, that? That's great. You like that? You like that? You got the uh, catwalk down good. Craig, we're just two guys looking at underpants. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Now, this is great. The body bag. That's a, that's a nifty idea. Does that, does that go down well? Uh, it is a popular item here. Travel light, overnight bag, in case, you're, in case you're visiting somebody overnight. Are you suggesting? <laughs> Just saying. Are you, or are you, are you coming on to me right now, Craig? Are you suggesting that you and I should have a little, we'll share beach towels together? You liked what you saw in the underwear before, didn't you? It is all good, baby. This is all butter. <laughs> this is all butter. <laughs> Great. Great. Let me know when this gets awkward. <laughs> So for that perfect day out with the one you love who has just passed away, come on down to the L.A. County Coroner's Gift Shop. We'll be waiting. <laughs> it's a totally real thing, to the point where I got everybody a gift. Yes. Oh, my. Beach towel. The, uh, <laughs> it's got to be the towel. The no, skeleton I'm, in the closet the uh, uh, gift shop. So, Paul, there is yours, if you'd no. like to have a look. It's... Oh, there we go. Uh, it's a doormat. Oh, that's quite <laughs> cool. <laughs> so, you know, just because, just because they take the body away from your doorstep doesn't mean you can't share those memories of the stabbing that happened. <laughs> Hold on, let me check the serial number on this. Okay, good. It's a D1118 uh, Devon, so <laughs> that's fine. That's a good quality. Thank you. Uh, Tim, I, oh. I got you these. It just felt Thank appropriate. Thank you very much, Rose. It's a... Uh, Oh. It's underwear. It's oh. the... Absolutely. Fresh, put them fresh on. Bear. I like them put very them much. Put them on. Let's see. Wait a minute. There are flies or no flies? Oh, no, here we go. Now, what I, <laughs> what I find interesting about them is there's a pocket in the back. So I don't know what you need to keep, like, your wallet on you while you sleep. <laughs> oh, look at that. Ladies here we go. Beautiful. Oh, you look good. I feel and rather my urban. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Ryan. It's uh, for the Aussie. Oh, yes! It's the barbecue apron! The barbecue apron. apron. <laughs> With a pocket for spare ribs and spare hands. <laughs> <laughs> it's obviously, ah, obviously made for it it very tiny necks. <laughs> yes. <laughs> squeeze into our gifts, but coming up after the break, the return of the random question hat. Billy <laughs> Paper. <laughs> Welcome back. It's now time for the random questions you have sent in by uh, Twitter through Facebook. We have plucked them from the internet and put them into... Random Question Hat. 
Tonight's random question hat has been provided by His Royal Highness, the Prince of Wales, also known as Prince Charles, the Duke of Cornwall, Mummy's Little Helper, and Jughead. Thanks, Jughead. Thanks, Jughead, indeed. Uh, so, gentlemen, please take a question from the random question hat. Paul, your random question. <clears throat> What's your best celebrity impersonation? Ooh. Interesting. Probably the actor John C. Riley. Mm. That's an interesting. Um, one. Yes, I, I, I try to specialize in, in impersonations that no one else did. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, John C. Riley is sort of. Yeah, Rove, it's really great to be on your show. Thanks so much for having me, man. This is like this is awesome to be here. Thank you so much. <laughs> like Tim Brown, you're like amazing. Hugh Jackman, Wolverine, like this is pretty cool. It's pretty cool to be here. That's really yeah, great. That's really good. good. Really good. <laughs> that was something I could actually do. I really lucked out. <laughs> could you breathe fire? Uh, Tim, what's yours? Let me see. What would you rather have? A puppy-sized elephant or an elephant-sized puppy? Ooh. That, that is a is very curly Is this question a metaphor? <laughs> <laughs> if it is, I'd like to know what for. Well, that's true. Well, let's, living let's in a small New York comes. apartment, I'll take the puppy-sized elephants. The puppy-sized yes. elephant. That would oh, be no. a great talking point. Because I, I would imagine the elephant-sized puppy will eventually grow up to be a dog. <laughs> it's not going to stay a puppy forever. It's called, he's called Clifford. Yeah. Yes, that's true. <laughs> exactly. He's real. Yes. I've got books about him. Clifford the big red dog. He's an enormous red dog. He's big as a house. Yes, he is. It reminds me of that episode of The Goodies where there was a giant kitten. <laughs> yeah. That was great. No one knows The Goodies. Oh, uh, you're American. You do know The Goodies. Hey. Yes. Three nerds on a bike. It was Good brilliant. Uh, ready? Hugh Jackman. Oh, come on. Sleep with a donkey or cut off a toe? <laughs> that sounds less like a question and more of a demand. <laughs> Sleep with a donkey or cut off a toe? It's, it, it's kind of important for me to know if I'm pitching or catching here. <laughs> good point. Good point. That is a good point. Yes. Good point. I'm just yes. saying. Medically speaking, cut off a toe could be a lot less damage. That's you know true. what I'm saying? That's true. <laughs> also, if you and the I'm donkey, with the donkey. Are, if you and yeah. the donkey, if you and the donkey are friends, it could get weird. <laughs> Although it says sleep. Yeah, yeah, you're right. The toe, the toe. Yeah. What was I thinking? Although the it does say sleep, like toe. it's not implying. Well, that's true. Oh, right. not implying that's that anything true. untoward has to happen. See? You could just spoon the donkey. You get all grubby. <laughs> you get all grubby. You get. <laughs> spoon a mule. You know how it works. <laughs> Right, well, that was... Random Question Hat. Of course, if you have a random question, uh, you can Facebook or tweet it, and your question may end up on the show. Well, gentlemen, thank you very much for coming in tonight. It's been a pleasure having you... Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't believe this has happened. I almost forgot. I have to write Mum a postcard. Uh, let her know how the show went. Sure. Uh. It's a thing that, I mean, it was sitting here the whole time. Yeah. I just didn't. I almost reminded well, you. Got, it's like there's a giant And then I thought, pen. he'll remember. There's a novelty yes. pen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, she's very demanding, needs to know immediately. Okay. Um, why don't you send an email then is a very good question. But anyway, I will get to that another time. But still, here we go. I, I nearly licked that. That wasn't right. Uh, dear Mum, tonight we had Tim Gunn on the show. Tim was really smart dress wise. Really smart brain-wise, and very smart ass-wise. <laughs> Hugh Jackman also joined us. He was his usual rude self. <laughs> the man is arrogance personified. There was barely enough room on the couch for his swollen head. Yeah. Of course I'm kidding. It's a oh. very big couch. <laughs> Our other guest was Paul F. Tompkins. You know how you told me never to trust a man with a moustache as he may be hiding something? Well, I wish you hadn't because all night I didn't hear a word Paul said. I just kept looking at his moustache thinking, what have you got hidden under there? <laughs> Is it a tiny knife? Another masked moustache more evil than this? Hang on, he may suspect that I'm onto him. I better give him a thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, gotta go. Look after yourself, Cosa. Love, Rove. P.S. Say hi to your mum for me, i.e. grandma. <laughs> I 
That is all we have for you tonight. Will you please thank Paul F. Tompkins, ladies and gentlemen. He's part of F. Tomcast podcast, available on iTunes. Tim Gunn, Project Runway, the new season coming soon to Arena. And Hugh Jackman, Australia, October 6th, in the UK, October 14. If you would like the chance to join us here in the studio in Los Angeles, log on to our website for details. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again next week. Until then, I'm Rove McManus. Say hi to your mum for me. Good night! <laughs> Fine guests coming up next week, including Kevin Smith, Anna Faris, and the handsome Dan McPherson. <laughs> they, they like that. They are happy with that. Very happy with that. Exclusive from Hollywood, Rove LA. Next Monday, 8.30, Fox 8.